Since 1959, the city-state of Singapore has been ruled by one party, the People's Action Party, or PAP. It was co-founded and originally led by Singapore's founding father, the late Lee Kuan Yew, and currently led by his son, incumbent Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong. In the country's last election in 2015, the PAP won 69.9% of the popular vote, and a staggering 83 of 89 elected seats in Parliament. The party is expected to maintain that supermajority in the upcoming election, where 93 seats will be contested. But Prime Minister Lee is now 68, and he indicated that he would step down by the age of 70. His designated successor is his deputy, Hing Sui Kiet. Political observers say these polls will gauge the public's confidence in the PM in waiting, as well as the new generation of PAP leaders. Now, the PAP has dominated Singaporean politics for more than six decades, leaving smaller opposition parties to grapple with infighting and funding issues. Ten of the parties have fielded candidates in the upcoming polls, but only one, the Workers' Party, had seats in the last parliament. In fact, the system is designed to guarantee at least some seats for non-ruling party voices. If the PAP were to win every race in this election, up to 12 opposition representatives could be appointed to non-constituency seats in Parliament. Political analysts say opposition parties have historically had difficulty attracting support outside the election season. One of them, the Progress Singapore Party, recently caused a stir when it said that Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong's estranged younger brother, Lee Hsien Yang, had joined the group. The younger Lee said the PAP had lost its way, but he won't be contesting the election this year. The campaign period is nine days, and this year the process will be tricky because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Parties have held rallies and conducted broadcasts online as large-scale rallies are banned, and all political parties must observe social distancing rules while physically campaigning. Political analysts expect the PAP to be challenged over the government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, after foreign workers living in dormitories ended up being the bulk of Singapore's 40,000 plus coronavirus cases. The impact of the pandemic on Singapore's economy is also expected to feature in the campaign. The government is projecting the economy will contract between four and 7%, putting the country on course for its worst economic year since it became an independent nation in 1965. The ruling party is expected to retain its grip on power, but analysts will be watching to see how changing demographics may shape the results. For example, in the 2015 election, voters below the age of 29 and above the age of 65 boosted the PAP's showing at the polls. In this election, Millennials and Gen Z Singaporeans will constitute a third of the electorate, with 933,000 citizens aged 20 to 39 as of 2019. They place greater emphasis on social issues such as climate change, minority rights, and the country's wealth gap. But the real question is, what kind of mandate will Singaporeans give the new generation of leaders in these volatile and uncertain times?